Well, what a great relief. We're now entering the fall season. We've had some rain, the temperatures have dropped, and most plants love it. Now, the dream of a gardener is to have flowers in your garden from early spring all the way through to a heavy frost. That isn't the case usually. We have to use a technique called succession, one plant after the other. Um, the hydrangeas here are a late season, midsummer into fall. They give you a lot for their money. But panicle hydrangeas like this limelight is especially good. Though there are some techniques how we can get around that. We can force plants back into flower again. And I'm terming today's segment, the Comeback Kings. And I'm gonna show you some of the plants that will do it and some of the techniques you can use to encourage it even more. Well, let's start with some perennials. And I've made a selection here of things we actually cut back or are going to cut back right now. So let's talk about our first plant. And this is the Calamintha. It's uh, more of a rarity in the garden. It's a beautiful kind of, uh, they call it, this is pink cloud and there is a white cloud. Now it's already flowered earlier in the summer. What I did with these two uh, plants was about four weeks ago, I cut it drastically like that. And you'd be surprised how quickly this plant comes back. The other wonderful thing about Calamintha, it's got a real minty smell, so it keeps the animals away. The rabbits and deer will leave that alone. Now, how about a classic? This is uh, sage, salvia. Now salvia blooms particularly earlier in the spring. It gives you that first flush of blue. And this one we've cut back twice. And each time it produces new flowers. So if you're quick to cut all the spent flowers off, and we usually cut it down pretty drastically to the ground. But as you say, here we are September and there's still lots of flowers to come. So it depends how much work you want to put in it. Something unusual we tried this year is the yarrow. Now this was a taller plant, but when we cut it back uh, the first time it produced flowers at slightly lower height, but it's still very, very pretty. In fact, there's another one here somewhere. Here we go. These are some of the new colors in the uh, yarrow family. And the lovely thing about yellow, it's just like the calamintha, deer resistant. I'd say deer proof from my own experience. All right, let's move to something more unusual. Now this was cut back about three, four weeks ago. Midsummer, it's dry, it's hot, um, you're watering too much. Plants don't look like they're the best. They get spotting on the leaf. So we cut this one right back. The new shoots came up and lo and behold, Peach's Pick. This is a uh, Stokesia, Stokes Aster. So Stokesia is the name of that one. Very, very good. And here's an example of that leaf spotting. I'm gonna turn it round. This is a gem of a plant. Now this is one of those plants that breaks all the rules. This one flowers from early summer all the way through to October. Even through, yes, through October, it's fair to say. Uh, but if you look in the summertime, because we're overhead watering, splashing it on, trying to keep them alive, uh, they get a lot of spotting on the leaves and they get very leggy. So this one we trim back a little bit, and I don't know if you can see, there's some new growth poking out. It will keep on flowering, flowering, flowering. So we're not encouraging flowering on this uh, geranium. This is called geranium azure rush. Azure as in the blue color, rush as in just keeps flowering. Now here's another early flowering. The cat mint, tough as nails, deer resistant, uh, but we cut this one right back again. Now it's important uh, with the cat mint, the nepeta, to cut it back, I usually say early July. If you've got nothing to do on July the 4th, then cut your cat mints back, and that will encourage more flowering. If you cut them back later, uh, they don't produce so many flowers. They do come back nicely, but not with uh, the flowers. Now if you're looking for plants, choose those that are known to bloom for a long, long time. And even cutting those back, like this little, uh, this is Dianthus, one of the pinks, this just keeps on throwing flowers up and up and up and up. If it looks rangy or if it collapses, cut it right back and off it goes. Something unusual, red hot poker. Again, it's not its season, but we trimmed them back, made them look all nice. And this one actually is just finishing flowering now. Right next to me here is a fine example of cutting back just to produce a nicer plant. Now this is an Artemisia, silver mound. It produces a wonderful silver. It's got a bit of moisture on it, so it looks a bit greener than it is. It's really a silver plant. It looks like a curled up silver cat. But what happens, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and the rain, the rain we had, breaks it open, and it looks messy. So a week ago, I cut it right back to that. And as you can see, it's already in a rush to come back. So lots of new shoots there. And within two or three weeks, it's gonna be a nice, pretty landscape plant. Uh, not for flowers, but for foliage. Now, a classic. We've all got some daylilies in our yard. This one is called, I think, mean, Kansas Kitten. It's known to be a re-bloomer, so that's one of the secrets. Some of the daylilies, doesn't matter what you do, if you cut them back, they're not gonna bloom again. So look on the tag 
For example, there's an example here of, this is night embers, a double flowering one. You'll see that one of its features is it will rebloom. To encourage it to rebloom, you can actually be pretty severe with it. And this is what I want to show you. So here's a stalk that flowered early in the summer. After we've finished flowering, make sure there's no flower buds to come. I will actually cut it down about two to three inches like that and give it a shot of a good fertilizer. And that can be enough to set this in motion to produce new flowers about this time of year. Okay, that was perennials. Let's look at some woody plants so we can do the same sort of thing with. This is actually a honeysuckle, a honeysuckle vine. We have it in the container here and it's gone all the way up and about. All these little fruit that are forming are seeds. It's how the plant uh, goes through its life cycle, reproduces. The problem about seeds though, is if you get too many of them, for some plants, it will shut down the flowering. Honeysuckle, incredibly fragrant early in the morning. Actually, they say it's uh, at peak fragrance about four o'clock in the morning, because it's, it's not the butterflies or hummingbirds that pollinate it, it's the moths. So early in the morning, if you get up early, a lot of that fragrance can be around if there's no wind. Well, I'm gonna make myself a challenge, a gardening challenge to see if I can bring this rose back into flower. It's got a few flowers on it, but I think later on it could be covered in flowers. Roses are really neat because they can go through a bit of frost. Now what I'm gonna do is cut some of those dead hips out that I should have done a few weeks ago. And what I'm hoping is I stimulate some quick growth and this plant will be in full flower in October. That's my challenge. So I'm gonna gradually work my way. And this one, because it's coming away a bit too much, uh, I'm gonna cut it right back there. And again, the rose hips, there are some new flowers coming, but not really what I want. I want a lot more, so I'm gonna be a bit greedy here. Well, I've got a bit of work cut out for me and work my way all the way around. So there you go. I'm gonna trim it right back. The challenge is on, and uh, you're more than happy to come down and visit here at Greystone Gardens, just outside the cafe, and see how the new growth comes up. And fingers crossed, we'll have flowers in October.